right, so this is simple covalent molecules and their boiling and melting point. So first of all, remember, simple covalent molecules have covalent bonds within them, but they do not have covalent bonds between them. So for example, if I had a H2 molecule, this has a covalent bond inside the molecule. But if I've got another H2, we do not have a covalent bond between them. If I did have a covalent bond between them, apart from the fact that hydrogen can't make two bonds, this would no longer be two separate molecules. This would just be one bigger molecule. So you cannot have a covalent bond between molecules. So with simple covalent molecules, what holds them together in terms of stopping them from boiling is not the covalent bonds. That has no effect on it. What holds simple covalent molecules together and stops them from boiling and therefore determines the boiling point is the intermolecular forces. Now, depending on the type of molecule you have will depend on the intermolecular force it uses. So there's different types. You can have a hydrogen bond, which is the strongest type of intermolecular force. You can have a permanent dipole-dipole force, which is like the medium strength one. Or you can have a London force, which is the weakest one. So we'll start with the weakest and we'll, we'll kind of go up from there. Just like all the other types, there's four things to think about though if you've got a question. So let's say the question says, what is the boiling, or explain the boiling and melting point in H2. So what we would say, now if you're not sure about whether to distinguish between whether something has a hydrogen bond, a permanent dipole, or a London force, you need to go back and watch my video on intermolecular forces. So like pause this, go and watch that, and then come back and finish this one off, because I'm not gonna go through where those forces come from here. Um, I'm just not gonna do it again. So um, hydrogen, H2, well, that it would be a gas, usually. So this one cannot make hydrogen bonds because it does not have an OH, an NH, or an FH. It, it does not have a difference in electronegativity between the two hydrogens, so it's not a polar molecule, so it can't make permanent dipoles, so this must rely on London forces, which are the weaker one. So I would say H2, it, as a molecule, does simple covalent bonding, these are held together by London forces, and then maybe you might want to put an extra bit of detail in there. So what causes a London force? Well, an uneven distribution of electrons. These are very weak, therefore require very little energy to break them. Therefore, these will have a very low boiling and melting point. Now, all of your intermolecular forces compared to ionic, covalent, and metallic bonds are very, very weak. So if you was comparing this to like say um, a sodium chloride, which is ionic, no matter what the molecule is, if it's simple covalent, it will have a relatively low boiling and melting point. But if say for example, I had uh, CH3Cl, so if I draw that out, Now, this would be a polar molecule because my Cl is more electronegative, so it'll pull the electrons towards itself, giving it a negative dipole, and the carbon will get a positive. So this, and it's not a symmetrical molecule because the Cl is different to the H, so this will be able to make permanent dipole-dipole forces. So if I was comparing H2 and chloromethane, which is this molecule here, I would say they're both very, very low, but H2 would have the lowest boiling and melting point. Okay? Uh, and then, for example, if I had, I don't know, H2O, this can obviously make hydrogen bonds. Again, if you're not sure why, go and watch that video on intermolecular forces. So out of the three of these, this would have the highest boiling and melting point. But just to clarify, all of these would be very, very low compared to a metallic, a covalent, or an ionic bond. Yeah, so giant ionic, giant metallic, or giant covalent. Okay, so just going through that one more time. With water, we would say the type of bonding is simple covalent. What holds the molecules together? Well, we've got hydrogen bonds. And again, you might want a sentence to be a bit more specific. So the uh, delta positive hydrogen of one molecule is attracted to the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen of a neighboring molecule. Watch that video again if you're not sure. These are 
compared to the bonds, they're weak, therefore they require little energy to break, so have a low boiling or melting point. Okay, so simple covalent, they're the ones with low boiling or melting points because they're held together by weak intermolecular forces which require little energy to break. But do be specific as to which intermolecular force your molecule would use.